What's up guys, welcome back to another video and uh, in today's video, let's talk about angular elements. First of all, angular 6 is out. Yay, it's a great news. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of guys arguing on the internet uh, saying that angular is releasing a lot of new versions and uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, they aren't learning angular or something like that. And uh, just for your information guys, after angular 2, after angular 2, angular 3, angular 4, a lot of versions were released, right? There are no major changes uh, compared compared with Angular 1. I mean, compared to the... Uh, how do I say this? There are no major differences between Angular 2 and the rest of all the versions still now, guys. It's the same uh, component-based architecture wherein you build web applications piece by piece and then uh, join them all together to run as a single page application. That's all. It's the same logic. After Angular 2, there hasn't been any groundbreaking change with regards to any other Angular versions. So, uh, you know, ignore all those guys. The clock is chiming. So ignore all those guys and then just, you know, uh, go on with Angular. Anyway, let's talk about elements today. Angular elements are an interesting feature, uh, particularly interesting feature of this uh, version 6 release that everyone was looking forward to. What you can do with elements is that you can simply build a specific component. Okay, for example, in this video, we'll see how to build a uh, subscribe now uh, form. You, you might see right in several uh, sites when you just try to leave the blog or site, you'll just be shown a small form saying enter your email to receive a free ebook worth $99 or a free uh, newsletter. Or something like that right you'll subscribe for newsletters right enter your email to stay up to date on the latest posts or something like that you'll uh, see a small form wherein you can enter your email and just click on follow or something and then uh, once you enter that and click it uh, your email will be automatically saved onto the system and then uh, you can navigate away from that page right basically that's just a marketing stunt you'll they'll just get your like 60 or 70 percentage of the sites will just get your email and then start sending out promotional stuff to you but that's another thing just leave it let's see it from a programming point of view let's see how to create that uh, form using angular and then once you created that using angular you can take it and use it in any application you can just include that code in a html page and it will work out fine just fine we'll see how to do that so that you get a better understanding of what is possible with elements okay elements open up a whole new uh, prospect of angular uh, prospect of web development with angular you'll see that all in this video and uh, yeah let's get started guys so first i have scaffolded out a simple application oh this is for several people were asking me why i updated upgraded to the latest version of uh, visual studio code guys i don't even know the version number of this that's why it looks a little bit changed 1.2 point 1.2 2.2 okay semantic versioning includes a lot of tools i guess so first of all, I'll change some settings to make. The first thing we'll do is, this is your application, right? The first thing you'll do is uh, install Firebase and Angular Fire 2. Okay. So what you can do is simply do npm install Angular Fire 2 Firebase. And uh, as regards to Angular 6, we need to install one more RxJS library called RxJS Compact. Okay. Okay, this is done. Uh, the next thing you can do, there is another new thing that you can do with uh, the Angular Clee guys. I updated the Angular Clee as well. Uh, that is, you can simply do ng add at Angular elements and it will automatically install that using your package manager and add it to your project. Okay, this is done as well. Let's just install one more package and then uh, we are done. So npm install uh, at web components custom elements okay okay let this get installed meanwhile uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, add our firebase configurations as we do as usual okay i have added the configuration for firestore and i have added the imports everything is done now let's just go ahead and uh, create a component that will be that we will be using for writing our uh, form okay so what shall we name the newsletter component okay uh, what we'll do is we'll do ngg component uh, news sign up okay this will generate a new component for us then in the declarations we'll remove app component we don't need that app component anymore 
so uh, we'll remove that and uh, bootstrap also we don't need to do the app component anymore we'll just remove that and here we'll add entry components and array inside this we'll do news sign up component okay this is our component right and we'll do a comma here cool and uh, inside a class app module we need to write some bootstrap function so that it takes our app and shows it up on the screen while we try to run it right so we'll uh, write some code for that uh, what we'll do is we'll create a element first now before that we'll do a constructor constructor uh, we need an injector injector is angular core i think yeah it's angular core constructor private injector injector okay sorry and then uh, what we'll do is we'll add a ng do bootstrap it's a function that we'll add inside that function we'll create an element constant element equals create custom element and inside that we'll uh, add our new sign up component comma we'll add this injector as well what's this this dot injector okay uh, then what we'll do is we'll uh, tell angular to uh, bootstrap this element to a particular uh, how do i say this particular selector tag okay so a particular selector tag in this case is uh, where is it where is my component newly created new sign up component should i refresh and yeah, here it is right so get in here and then get into app news sign up right so we'll go in here and then do custom elements dot define app news sign up comma element cool right sorry okay uh, so far so good what is this showing so far so good now uh, we have our app will not bootstrap this particular wait i'll show you we can simply remove this completely and then add a app news sign up oh sorry okay uh, now our app should bootstrap this particular component as our entry component so that when we run this we can see whatever is present in new sign up works this is what we should be uh, seeing so let's run this and see if uh, whatever we have written so far works wow it works right new sign up works this is what uh, so our component is now loaded onto uh, the screen there is nothing fancy in this right there is nothing fancy in this we have simply created uh, a part of an element uh, and we are bootstrapping it to run uh, but we need this entire build system this uh, web server to be running in the background so that we could see this in our local host machine how to take this element and then put it somewhere else and make it run that's the whole point of angular elements right so let's see how that works before that let's make this a little bit beautiful by adding some more code into it and then uh, you know adding some css element and all we don't need any of these guys now so i'll just go ahead and uh, click on app component delete it uh, get into new sign up I already have some code for this form and here i should encapsulate this view as a native dom element so that uh, uh, you'll understand why just wait view i'm oh, sorry encapsulation view encapsulation dot native okay and then get in here as usual everything uh, private afs so far so good guys you understand what i have done here right i am simply adding uh, the email that is being entered into this okay uh, into firestore and uh, email collection okay uh, now let's run this and see if it works fine once oh, it's already running wow now you get it right subscribe to our newsletter a simple form uh, some air mail style form and then if you enter your email i'll open the console here and enter click on follow me added cool right if you get into 
Firestore, you'll obviously you see that we have a new collection called emails and uh, we can see our email added right. Okay, all this is fine. I have just created a Angular element. This is similar to uh, creating a component in uh, Angular application. How are you going to take this element and add it to any other page? Just like you mentioned at the beginning of this video. That might be your next question, right? Watch carefully. It's a very simple process, guys. Very, very simple process, actually. Uh, simply build it for production. Okay. In this case, you will get a disk directory with four files. Okay. We have built our project here and uh, inside the disk directory, we have these files, right? Let's just create a new, uh, I created a new project called some random project and inside that I have my index.html. Assume that this is a web application that you're creating. Okay, it can be any web application. Now look carefully, I have just imported, I mean pasted those files inside this directory and I'm simply using my selector that I used originally in my uh, index.html in the Angular project, right? This selector that I'm used, that I am using here, where is it? This selector is the one I'm using here as well. Cool, right? You understand what's happening here. Now, I, obviously I can concatenate all these four JS files into a single file, but let's not go into that. Uh, I believe Angularly itself will come up with some uh, command line option to do that stuff. If for now, assume that we have just pasted all those files inside the same directory uh, and we have created a uh, new project, web project, inside which we are trying to use our Angular element. Let's try to run this, okay. First of all, I am not running any web servers in the background, as you can see here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll get into the file containing that some random project and then op try to open it with Google Chrome. Cool, right? You can see this file home Rajavan uh, something. So I am serving this from my file system and I am simply and I am still able to see all that uh, form, right? Let's try adding test to at test.com it would work as well as well so once you click on follow me and once it gets added it should show added here right wow it works fine as well right so this is how you use and it stores here as well this is how you use your angular element that is a component a web component a piece of web component that you wrote for a specific function using angular you can take that and use it in any other web component in written in any other language you can see why right you just need to uh, use the selector inside that html file add the js files that were generated during the build process here into that html file and you're good to go that's it so now you can see why i said angular elements open up a whole new world of possibilities you can be developing in any language any your project stack can be in any stack i mean any technology as long as it's web based and as long as you are using HTML, obviously if it's web-based, you would be using HTML to finally uh, display it in a browser, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, you just need to include your uh, this particular uh, element as a selector in that HTML file and it will automatically take care of all the stuff for you guys. This is the beauty of Angular Elements and this is why I feel that Angular Elements is such a great feature that will be helpful for all of us, all of us uh, moving in this Angular direction angular direction okay um, all of us study angular uh, for writing uh, web uh, projects so yeah guys this is what i wanted to show you guys today i felt that uh, this was a great uh, great feature that's been newly added to angular 6 i'll also try to make a video on all the other stuff that's available now with angular 6 uh, i also promised uh, i mean last video i said I'll do native mobile applications if you guys want it and everyone started to ask what am I going to do and uh, will there be no more Ionic and all that. No, no, there will be Ionic. For now, I am not doing Ionic because this capacitor is about to be released. They just keep on uh, giving hints that uh, capacitor is soon to be released and all that. So I feel that if I do Ionic uh, videos now, then obviously they will become obsolete once capacitor gets released, right? So I'm waiting for the capacitor release in the meantime. I thought I would uh, mess around with this Flutter project, Google Flutter project. It's gaining momentum, guys. It's a uh, I, I played around with it and I feel it's really cool. Uh, so if you want uh, to see that as well, kindly let me know in the comments and I'll uh, make a few videos on Flutter. Uh, I mean, native mobile application development with uh, Flutter as well. And uh, yeah, guys, buy my course. Uh, link is in the description below. It's a great course. You'll get the code as well. 
uh, it's for uh, writing desktop applications with angular and uh, electron and firestore and uh, i am shamelessly plugging my <laughs> own stuff in this video hit like if you like this video guys if hit like if you like angular elements especially subscribe to this channel if you want to watch more cool stuff if you if you want me to build more angular elements give your ideas to me uh, for angular elements so that i could build them out and then give you the js files i mean not give you the js files give everyone the js files so that everyone could use it just commonly appearing web components that you feel would be useful if someone uh, wrote a script file for that just if you find something like that just let me know and i'll write a web, web i mean i'll write an angular element for that so yeah guys talk to you guys in my next video bye